Improvising in double time is very effective for slow to medium tempos. Shifting from regular to double time requires a shift of beat perception in which your even eighth note turns into your quarter note. There are a few challenges along the way though. You need a good sense of time and a pretty good technique, not to mention the ability to create interesting jazz lines that you can play at speed. Today, let's work on a three bar phrase using many of the concepts we usually discuss on this channel and create a full workout using double time improvisation. Let's listen to the entire phrase. First, I'll play the progression in regular time and then change to double time by playing a jazz line. Remember, the tempo will stay fixed at 120 beats per minute. To make it more obvious, I will double time the walking bass and the drums will also switch to double time, but the harmonic rhythm will stay unchanged. So if you want to learn not only how to play a line like this, but also how to create it and practice it, I'll show you all the steps that I take. Let's start with a very often used harmonic progression, 2-5-1 with a 2-5-5 five five preceding it. You'll find this progression in hundreds of tunes. The first thing that I'm going to do is add a turnaround chord so that I can repeat the line in a loop when I practice it in any key. So let's add a 5-7 of 6, which will anticipate the first chord of the phrase. So then you can practice the line in a loop, like this. change it to any key and play it, but don't write it down. I'll show you how to practice it so that you don't have to do that. This is an essential part of playing these lines. Write it down only in one key and then play it in all keys without any written music. So if we change to the key of E flat, the harmonic progression becomes Later on, we'll use a different chord at the end and adjust the line to modulate a perfect fifth down in order to create a 12 key workout. Okay, so how do you create a line like this? Here's your first tip. Define the melodic shape. For example, a curve that goes up and comes back down. Then use target notes tracing your shape. So here, I used one and three on the G minor and then one and flat seven on C7. Then I used a five and a flat three on C minor and five and three on F7. And finally, three on B flat and flat seven on the D7. So all these target notes are core tones, and I made sure at least one of the guide tones was used on each of the chords, because guide tones contain the essence of the chord's sound. If you're not versed on target notes, I suggest you check out our Target Notes book series with more than a thousand jazz standards with target notes from chord tones to tensions and tone lines. Okay, so now we've created a framework with which we can develop our line. For simplicity's sake, let's devise our line using only 16th notes. This is a very common technique for double time improvisation, and it will make it easier to play since you're just playing a stream of 16th notes throughout the entire phrase. 
let's start with approach notes or approach note groupings. So let's trap this B flat using diatonic approach notes. If we were using triplets, we could have trapped the B flat by just adding A and C. The A approaches the B flat from below and the C approaches the B from above. This is a diatonic trap because both the A and the C belong to the G Dorian scale. But since we want to play only 16th notes, we can double trap the B flat like this. Now, to get to this C up here, since there's a large gap between the notes, the best option is to use an arpeggio. So we take the extended G minor 7 arpeggio, starting on B flat, like this. From C to B flat, we could use approach notes, or if we want to create a more angular line, uh, we could use a scale going up to B flat by first skipping down from C. So this C7 would take Mixolydian. We can add the three notes before B flat in the Mixolydian scale and get this. All right, let me show you guys a nice trick. See how this C7 turns into a C minor seven? You'll find these dominant chords turning into minor seven chords with the same root everywhere. When you see this, always replace the Mixolydian scale on the dominant chord with a Lydian flat seven scale. So instead of having a fourth degree in the scale, you'll have a sharp four or a sharp 11. This sharp 11 approaches the five much better, increasing the tension that can then be released once the dominant chord turns into a minor seven chord. This is very effective. You can also think that you're approaching the fifth of the dominant chord with a sharp 11. Either way, remember that this F sharp is a great note to use on a C7. So we can exchange this F for an F sharp, and we're getting to the B flat using an ascending scale. At the same time, we're creating an angular line by adding this downward leap here. To get to this G, we can use another arpeggio again. So if we add three more notes above the B flat, using the arpeggio from our C7, now C7 sharp 11, we have B flat, D, and F sharp, and an A. And this works great because it resolves to the G on the C minor 7. And at the same time, the F sharp and the A are trapping the G. Next, we need to find a way to get from this C to this E. Let's try something different this time. We've talked extensively about reharmonization techniques in the past. If you wanna find out more about reharmonizations, I'll put a link to the series in the description below, or you can click on the i-card. Okay, when you're improvising, you can reharmonize the chords in a chart just a little bit. Mind you, this reharmonization is not meant to be played by the other players or even your left hand, if you're a piano player. These reharms are only meant to be played by the soloist. So instead of thinking you're in C7, let's interpolate a 5-7 of that C7, a G7. So now we can use a G7 arpeggio to connect this G to this E flat. So we're thinking G7 on top of the G note and C minor 7 on top of the E flat. So we can shift the arpeggio's octave to target the E-flat like this. The cool thing about this line is that we are reharmonizing the C minor 7 with a G7 to C minor 7, and also we are trapping the E-flat with D and F. Now we need to connect this E-flat to the C note below F7 with three more 16th notes. So far, we've been connecting notes this time, let's try something different. Instead of filling out the space between the target notes, we can add approach notes before our targets, delaying them. By doing this, we create more tension that will resolve later. So let's trap the E-flat with a chromatic trap from above and below like this. 
So now our resolution is delayed by half of a beat, which creates a nice balance between tension and release, making the line much more interesting. And we can keep this displacement if we want also. So let's connect the E flat to the C under the F7 with another arpeggio. If we play the C minor arpeggio starting on E flat, we get E flat, G, B flat, and D. And let's shift the octave again to target the C like this. Again, the arpeggio works great and it also traps the C note with B flat and D. Notice that our target note is still shifted a half beat. And that's awesome because we're playing with the harmonic rhythm to create tension. Notice how under the F7, we now have a B flat, the fourth, which is a note you would never use on a dominant seventh chord because it sounds so bad. But it is resolving to the expected C note in the end. Now, if we wanted to release this tension created by the displacement that we've created, we could connect the C to the A with only one 16th note. But I'm going to take an even more drastic approach and simply play the A on the following 16th after the C. So now, we're anticipating this target note, A. And now we have an entire beat to connect the A with the D. So let's add a reharm here by substituting the F7, which is the 5-7, with the sub-5, which is B7 with a Lydian flat 7 scale, and connect the notes with a descending B7 Lydian flat 7 scale. So we get A, G-sharp, F-sharp, E-sharp, D-sharp to D. I'll write it using flats since it makes more sense in the current key, because actually, we should be talking C flat 7 as the sub 5, but B7 is easier to think about in the current key. Okay, so now we have a D half note as the target. If we want to fill out these two beats with 16th notes, we can use what I call a super chromatic trap. And this is how you do it. Approach the target chromatically from below, and then trap it with a triple chromatic approach from above and one chromatic from below, like this. You can create this trap using any pattern you'd like. They'll become more familiar to you as you play them, and they will become part of your playing without having to think about them. Now, we just need to connect this D with the C. Actually, in real life, you might be switching targets as you go, and sometimes target substitution is very handy. So I'll replace the C target, which is the flat 7 of the D7, with the flat 13, or the sharp 5 if you want to think about it that way also. So instead of targeting the C, let's target the B flat. This will give us a nice opportunity to use the same trapping we used at the beginning of the line. Remember this? We can use it again here, like this. And land on the B flat, but now it's functioning as the flat 13, or sharp 5, of the D7, which works great. Now we can target the beginning of the line, so we can practice repeatedly in a loop without having to stop. We need five more 16th notes. The easiest way is to play a descending D7 Mixolydian flat 9, flat 13, which is the scale we should pair the 5, 7 of 6 with. So we count five notes up from G and we land on E flat. So let's add that descending scale starting on E flat to target the G. Notice that this E flat is the flat 9 of the D7. This will become handy when we transpose this line into different keys. So, our line is done. If you've come this far in the video, congratulations. I know this is a lot of information and it might seem a bit elaborate to just improvise over three bars. 
But my goal is not to just present the line, but rather go through the entire process so you can learn how to start tackling improvisation and how to think about it. Which brings us to an important point in the video. What's the first step? Learning how to create a line like this or being able to play it. Just try playing this line in the key of E flat to see what happens. It's not that easy unless you can really handle all the techniques present in it. And by handle, I mean hearing them, feeling them in your fingers. Trust me, once you've played a few lines like this in all keys, from the perspective of target notes, approach notes, and other techniques we talked about, you'll be a master at this. But it requires effort. On the next video, we will look at the walking bass line and how to practice this line in each key separately. Thanks always for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell to stay up to date on current content. Thanks.